Welcome to Zeiss Reverse Engineering, your software solution for surface reconstruction and tool correction. In this video, we'll look at a quick and easy way to create a cat for freeform surfaces. If you want to try things in ZRE, take a look at the description below. There you'll find links to download a trial version and training data. I'll open an existing project. The mesh is aligned, so we can start the surface reconstruction right away. If you're using a different project and need to edit your mesh or create an alignment, check out the video Edit and Align Meshes in Size Reverse Engineering. Let's start by looking for the function we need. We're working with a mesh, so in the action bar, select Create from Scanning Data. As I said at the start, we want to create a freeform surface. That falls into the category Approximations. Here you find the function Surface Approximation to Points, which is what we're going to use. The dialog tells you what to do next. Select Points. Make sure Element Selection is active and click a point on the mesh to select the entire mesh. You can see it's selected based on the blue color in the cat window and the little check mark here in the function dialog. Define the type of approximation you want to use. In this case, that's planner. Next, you need to define a projection plane. By default, Xeri suggests the best fit plane. To visualize the plane, activate define orientation. Now you can see and edit the projection plane. You can adjust the orientation of the projection plane by clicking one of the blue handles and rotating it. In the preview, you can also see the two directions, U and V. When you look at the function dialog, you'll see that they are surface parameters that determine the segmentation of the surface we're creating. If the length and width of your mesh are nearly the same, you don't need to differentiate between U and V direction you can use uniform values. In this case, however, the length of the mesh is greater than the width. That means we need more segments in V direction. To adjust the number of segments, select U and V different. Now you can adjust the number of segments in V direction. The goal is to obtain segments that are square. So estimate the ratio of segments in U and V direction accordingly. I'd say my mesh is about twice as long as it's wide, so I'll change the number of segments to 20 for V. To check your estimate, click Segmentation Preview. You can adjust the values and repeat the preview as many times as you want. Now we established a ratio that works, but the quality of the resulting surface would still be low due to the limited number of segments. To mitigate that, we can simply multiply the number of segments for U and V by 10. You can simply enter the equation and Xeri computes the results for you. As you can see in the preview, the segmentation is much smaller now, which means we'll capture a lot more detail in our surface approximation and ultimately obtain a higher quality cat. However, it's also noticeable that the segments are not quite square. Let's try 100 by 190. That looks good. Underneath, you see the number of iterations. You'll only need to change this number if you use the advanced options. Otherwise, keep the default of 20 iterations here. Now for the advanced options. Depending on the shape of your part, they can further improve the quality of your surface. The detailed approximation affects the number of iterations. When you activate this option, the segments are redrawn after each iteration. When you use detailed approximation, you must double the total number of iterations. Please note that increasing the number of iterations also increases the computation time. The curvature dependent weighting improves the quality in areas with high curvature changes. Let me show you based on the result of the distance analysis for the current surface. Points in areas with high curvature changes, like we have here for example, are weighted higher. This will reduce the deviations you see on the current analysis. Alright, let's get back to our surface approximation. Activate both advanced options 
and set the number of iterations to 40. Remember, you need to double it when you're using detailed approximation. Then click Execute and Close. The ZRE software computes the surface. In this window here, you can see each iteration with the corresponding maximum and average distance. After iteration 20, you'll see that the deviation is very close to zero. On the right, you can see the results for the iterations and take a snapshot if you want. Please note that you need to define a folder for snapshots in the settings. Okay, now let's analyze the resulting surface. First, we'll check the segmentation of the surface. Open the Model Explorer and hide the mesh. In the action bar, open Analyze, Curvature Analysis, Surface Body Isolines. Select the surface in the cat window. When you zoom in, you can see that the segments are universally square and there's almost no tension in the surface. That's the result we want to see. Next, let's compare the surface to the actual mesh to visualize deviations. In the action bar, open Analyze, Distance Analysis, Nominal Actual Comparison. Select the mesh in the Model Explorer. Under Accuracy, select User Defined to limit the search radius. I'll set the tolerance range to 0.1 mm. Then click Analyze to see the results. And as you can see, almost everything is green, so within tolerance. Since this is a sand toy, this accuracy is more than sufficient. But if you want to reach an even higher accuracy, all you have to do is increase the number of segments for your surface approximation. Before we can export the cat, we need to cut the overhang. To do that, we'll create a plane that intersects the surface. In the action bar, open Create with Elements. Here you'll find the submenu Manual. Select Create Plane Manually. To find out where to position the plane, display the mesh in the cat window. Then use the blue handles on the plane to adjust its size so that it covers the entire mesh. Now when I adjust the view with the coordinate cube, you see that the plane goes through the mesh rather than being at the bottom edge. To adjust the plane's position, change the value under base point Z. You can use the mouse wheel to do that. Or follow the instructions in the dialog and press Ctrl T. Then you can click the respective axes in the cat window and move the plane with the left mouse button. Now remember, we're going to use this plane to cut off the excess surface material. To do that, the plane must intersect the surface. Display the surface in the cat window to check that it does around all edges. Then click Execute and Close to create the plane. Now we can combine the two elements and get rid of the overhang. Under Create with Elements, select Boolean Operations, Combine Elements. If the mesh is still visible in the cat window, hide it to make the selection easier. Select the plane and the freeform surface in the cat window or the model explorer. To select multiple elements, use Ctrl and the left mouse button. Note that under Options for Input Data, Delete Input Data After Operation is activated by default. That means that the plane and the freeform surface would be deleted once we execute this command. That's fine because you generally no longer need these elements. However, if you want to keep the auxiliary elements, you need to deactivate this option. Then click Execute and Close. The two elements will be combined and stored as a new element in the category Bodies in the Model Explorer. Hide the selected elements, which are the plane and freeform surface, to display the body exclusively in the cat window. When I highlight the body, you'll see that it's one single body. But the body consists of different geometries, which we can select with the geometry selection. And that's what we'll use to get rid of the elements we don't need. The overhang, the surrounding plane, 
and the inner plane here. Remember to use Ctrl and the left mouse button to select multiple elements. To delete them, click the right mouse button and select Delete or use the Delete key. And here's our cat model. You can display the mesh again to compare the two. The final step is the export. Simply select the cat model, either in the Model Explorer or the cat window. Click Export Geometries and select only the selected elements. Choose a folder, name the file and select the file type. I'll export the cat model as a step file. And that's it! You created a cat using surface approximation to points. This method is well suited to rapid prototyping as it's easy to use and delivers results within minutes. If you're interested in reverse engineering a part using standard geometries and freeform surfaces, check out the video Reverse Engineering for Mechanical Parts Hybrid Modeling. And in case you haven't watched it yet, check out Reverse Engineering for Organic Shapes if you want to know how to directly convert a mesh into a cat. For even more content on size reverse engineering, check out our trainings. You'll find the link in the description below.